Unity has released a new version of their XR Interaction Toolkit and there are significant changes. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your Unity project for hand tracking using the latest XR Interaction Toolkit and the XR Hands packages. So let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a new project. Here I'm using the editor version 22.3.28 F1 LTS. I'm choosing the 3D code render pipeline. Let's give our project a name. Select a file location and you can either choose to connect to Unity Cloud or not connect to it and create a project. Once you have your project open, you can install the XR Interaction Toolkit package by going inside Windows, Package Manager, select Unity Registry and scroll all the way down till you find XR Interaction Toolkit. But here you might notice that it's showing version 2.5.4 but Unity has released a latest version and to get that you need to copy this com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit and click on the plus symbol, click on add packages by name, paste it here and click on add. While installing you might get a prompt saying that a new input system has been found and if you would like to enable it so click on yes. Once your package has been installed you can click on the samples tab and import the starter asset and the hand interaction demo as well. While importing the starter assets, you might notice that it will open the project settings window. For now, let's close it. I'll get back to that later on. Next, we need the XR hands package, which you can find under Unity registry as well. So you can select this. And now to make sure we get the latest package, you can copy the name com.unity.xr.hands. Click on the plus symbol, click on add packages by name, paste it here and click on add. Once you have the package imported, Go ahead and import the hand visualizer samples. So with that, we have all the packages that we need. So you can close this window, go inside file, click on build settings and here click on Android and switch the platform. Honestly, I should have done this as a first step after creating the project, but I forgot about it. Anyway, I will see you once it's done switching. Next, click on player settings. Here you can feel free to change the default company name. Scroll down in the other settings, you need to uncheck the auto graphics API. Then you need to enable the override default package name. We need to set the minimum API level as Android 10. Set the scripting backend to IL2CPP. Make sure to check ARM64. Then click on the XR plugin management. And in the Android tab, here if you're not able to see the open XR plugin package, then go back to Windows package manager, search for open XR plugin and click on install. Once that's done, close this window. And now inside your project settings, inside the Android tab, you can check the open XR and here it will give you a warning saying that some of the settings are incompatible and we need to check the project validation tab. So if we come here, there are some fixes that we'll have to do. You can click on fix all. And then there are some more settings that we have to configure manually and that is to go inside open XR. Here we need to select an interaction profile. So click on the plus symbol. We can select Meta Quest Touch Pro Controller Profile and also the Oculus Touch Controller Profile. And here we need to select the features that we'd like to use. Since we're using hand tracking, we need to enable hand interaction poses, hand tracking subsystem, meta hand tracking game, and meta quest support. Now I almost forgot, we also need to add the hand interaction profile. Now if you want to test your Unity scene from the editor onto your meta headset using Link, for that you have to go inside the PC tab, go inside XR Plugin Management, and enable OpenXR here as well. Go inside the open XR tab and inside your PC window. Here once again, you need to add the hand interaction profile, Meta Quest Touch Pro Controller profile and the Oculus Touch Controller profile. And here once again, we need to select the feature that we'd like to use, which is hand interaction poses, hand tracking subsystem, Meta hand tracking aim. And now if you check the project validation tool, you'll see that we have no issues for the PC window and we have no issues for the Android as well. So let's go ahead and close this. And with that, we have set up our project. Now to set up our scene for hand tracking, select the main camera and delete it. Right click in your hierarchy, select XR and add the XR origin VR. Now this will add the XR interaction manager and the XR origin VR component, which has the camera offset and main camera. Now if you'd like to track your hands, we need to create an empty game object. We'll call this as left hand and right click once again and create another game object called right hand. Select both the game objects and add a component called track pose driver input system. Here we need to add the position input, rotation input and the tracking state input. Now we don't want to map the actions directly. Instead, we'll use reference for all the three. Now select the left hand and let's add the position input. So here you can search for position, select XRI left position. For the rotation, you need to search for rotation and add XRI left rotation. Similarly, for the tracking state input, we'll search for state and add 
XRI left tracking state. Now do the same for the right hand as well. Alright, so now to confirm that the hands are getting tracked, we can right click on the left hand and create a cube. Let's set its scale to 0.05 in all the direction. Duplicate it and add it to your right hand as well. And now you can save your scene and before you can test it, make sure that you're connecting your headset using link or air link. If you're not sure how that's done, you can check out this video over here and then click on the play button. And here you can see that the cube is following my left hand, it's following my right hand and it is following the hand rotation as well. Now this was just to show you how the hand tracking works. We don't really need it right now. So let's go ahead and delete both the cubes, select both the objects and remove the track post driver component. Instead, what we are going to do is in your project window, you need to search for hand tracking. Make sure the search is selected for all. Select the left hand tracking, add it to your camera offset. Select the right hand tracking and add this as well. Now, if you check out this prefab, you'll see that it has the XR hand tracking event, which has the left hand and it has the right hand as well. Now, this has the XR hand skeleton driver, which takes the root transform and it references to the XR hand tracking event and it maps all the skeleton. So if you open this prefab, you'll see that it has the skeleton and all the bones of our hands. And this has the skin mesh renderer, which you can visually see. Now here it has a material called as hands default material. Currently it is set to rendering mode as fade, which I don't really like. So I'm going to select both of these and uh, or maybe the left hand and the right hand, which have the material and change it to white so that I can see it better. Alright, so now if you save your scene, press play and test it. You can see that your hands are tracked and the mesh renderer is updated based on your hand and finger position and rotation. Alright, now let's see how to add grab interaction. Now remember that for any grab interaction, you need an interactor and an interactable. Now in the earlier versions, you could grab an object using the direct interactor and ray interactors and you can use the grab interactable. However, in the latest update, they have combined both direct interactor and ray interactor into one single prefab called as near far interactor. Now you can use that interactor to decide whether you want to interact with an object which is close by far away or both of them together. So let's see how to set that up. In your project window, search for near far interactor, select the left interactor, drag and drop it inside left hand. Select the right interactor and drag and drop it inside the right hand. Right now, these prefabs have all the components required for you to be able to grab and move the object, but it does not follow your hands. So to make sure that it follows your left and right hand, you need to create an empty game object inside your left hand, call it as pinch position and create another empty game object and call it as aim position. Select both the game objects and add the track post driver input system component. Select the pinch pose and here let us use reference for all three of them. For position input, search for pinch. Select XRI left pinch position. For the rotation input, let's search for rotation. Select the XRI left rotation and for the tracking state input, search for state and select the XRI left tracking state. Now for the aim position, let's select use reference for all three of them. And for position, we need to search for aim. Select left aim position. For the rotation, search for aim once again and select left aim rotation. And for the tracking state, you can search for state and select the XRI left tracking state. Next, select these two components, duplicate them, drag and drop it inside the right hand and re-reference them such that it maps to the right hand. Alright, so I mapped the pinch position to XRI right pinch position, rotation to XRI right rotation and tracking space to right tracking space. Similarly, for the aim position, it is right aim position, right aim rotation and right tracking space. So the pinch position is going to map your thumb and the aim position is somewhere around your palm region. Next, select the left far interactor and here we can leave all of them as it is. You can scroll down. I'll explain this component in a bit. And here you can see that the interaction attach transform is currently tracking itself. So which is why even if you move your hand, the interactor is not going to follow. Instead, we want to replace it with pinch position. Similarly, the spear interactor center is going to be the pinch position. However, the curve interaction caterer is going to be your aim position. Next, open this prefab and here we have the line visual. Now we want the line visual to also fall the aim position. So drag and drop it inside the line origin transform. Do the same for the right hand as well. Alright, so with that we have set up the interactor. Now to create the interactable, right click in your hierarchy, select XR and click on grab interactable. 
Now this will create a cube which has a box collider, a rigid body and the XR grab interactable. Now here you can uncheck gravity and use a kinematic for now. All right, so let's uh, move this cube slightly ahead over here, somewhere over here. Save your scene and test it out. And here you can see that we have the ray coming out of our hand. So if you want to grab it, you can point towards it and pinch your hand and it gets grabbed. But it doesn't snap to your hand. Same thing with your left hand as well. However, if you try to grab it from close by, you see that the ray disappears and now you can directly grab it like this. All right, now let's see how to configure different settings to get some desired results. Right now you can see that I'm able to grab the object and it snaps to your hand. If you don't want that to happen, you can select the grab interactable and inside the XR grab interactable component, you can check use dynamic attach. So once you do that, now when you try to grab it, you see that it's going to get grabbed at the point in which you actually grab it and it does not snap into your uh, palm or something like that. Next, you can select the left far interactor or right far interactor, it's up to you. And if you scroll all the way up to near far interactor, if you don't want to use ray interaction, you can just uncheck enable far casting. And now you can see that there's no more ray interaction, so you cannot grab it from far. But with your right hand, you can. Um, but with your left hand, you can just grab it directly. Now you can do the same in the opposite way as well. You can enable far casting and disable enable near casting, which means that now you cannot grab it when it is close by. I mean, you're able to grab it because there's a casting, but generally you won't be. You'll be able to grab it only from far away. Now, the next thing that you need to know is uh, far attach mode. Uh, so here, if you click it as near, now when you grab it, it's going to get snapped to your hand like this. All right, so now let's exit the play mode. Now I would highly encourage you to play around with these settings and configure it as per your requirement. Now, if you don't understand something, I will leave a link for this documentation, which explains what each of the property does. All right, so this was just a setup video. Now, if you want to know how to use the other features like poke interaction, hand gestures, then you should definitely check out this video over here. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.